गुड मॉर्निंग पीपल गुड मॉर्निंग गाइस एबल टू हियर मी द वॉइस इज ऑल क्लियर One second, guys. One more. so how's everything going on and uh, sab log tension mention shuru ho gaya panic tension uh, discomfort awesome guys is the voice not clear awesome guys is the voice not clear it's coming perfectly no तो ठीक है आज जल्दी जल्दी शुरू कर तो बस हो गया फॉर दोज हु डोंट नो मी आई एम एक्चुअली नोन एज रंगनाथ एन एसवीएन कोंडला तो मैं तो हूँ आई बीन टीचिंग एम पी एस सी फॉर क्वाइट सम टाइम हिस्ट्री वगैरह पढ़ाता हूँ दे इज एब्सोल्युटली नो ब्रैक बैकग्राउंड नॉइस हिस्ट्री वगैरह पढ़ाता हूँ Something is wrong on your side only, Sita Dri. फिर से एक बार start कर दो, because I don't hear any noise. I'm very clear. नहीं नहीं नहीं, वो तो इसी वजह से क्योंकि my speaker was open. <coughs> Now you won't get the double voice. नहीं, that's because I was also hearing my own video on my own phone. तो बस इस वजह से. Okay, तो the first question for the day. Consider the following statement: The United Nations Charter established six main organs of the United Nations, including Security Council. No, this, this, I mean, sorry. One second, guys. I think this is yesterday's. First question: Consider the following statements about Mahakaleshwar Temple. Kalidasa, the great Sanskrit poet of the Gupta times, mentioned the rituals of the temple in his works in Meghadutam. The temple complex uh, was destroyed by Iltutmish during the raid of Ujjain in 1234-35. Uh, the temple, in its present form, was built by Maratha general uh, Santaji Ghorpade. Which of the following statements about either are correct? One and two, two and three, one and three, one two three. <laughs> Ujjain Mahakaleshwar Temple. Answer is A. Went to the buffalo in the water. <laughs> He's like, "Aate hi, bhans." He's like, "Today I want to swim." Ye summer hai. <laughs> Arey Shamshuddin Iltut Mish ne bhi toda hai. Like your buffalo actually was searching for water and went for swimming. Shamshuddin Iltutmish. Yes, why not? He destroyed Ujjain in 1234-35. That's 
The present structure was rebuilt by Maratha General Ranoji Shinde in 1734. Ujjain city, previously known as Avantika, was the status of devotional epicenter. It was also one of the primary cities where students went to study holy scriptures. <coughs> Mm. Kalidasa, the great poet of Gupta times, mentioned the rituals of the temple <coughs> in his work Megadutam. Mahakaleshwa temple is one of the main uh, 12 Jyotirlingas dedicated to Lord Shiva. We do Sitatri. I mean, let me put it this way, guys. Sandeep, Sitatri, you did not get the information of Iltutmish's invasion because you were searching for information in the book of Poonam, Poonam Dalal Dahiya. Right? Tata Megra Hill, Poonam Dalal Dahiya ki book mein dhoond rahe to isi le nahi mila. Jaha information search kare te wohi galat hai. <laughs> If you would have read this Satish Chandra book, it is in Satish Chandra ke book. Mein hai. And reading Tamil Nadu book is the biggest crime one can do. Because Tamil Nadu book, why do you mention Ujjain? What is the reason? They don't care about Ujjain. Which of the following has launched the Global Food Security Platform, Food and Agriculture Organization, International Finance Corporation, World Food Program, United Nations Development Program? See, let me put it this way, guys. Hamesha subject padho, book nahi. In this exam, book is irrelevant. Your, which book you source your study or a history from is completely irrelevant in this exam. Good morning, Ganesh. Good morning, Ranadhi. Good morning, everybody. Mm. Global Food Awareness Program is actually a program launched by International Finance Corporation. <laughs> <laughs> Googly pe googly chal raha hai. IFC International Finance Corporation has launched a global food security program basically to support the private sector for sustainable production and de delivery of food stocks to countries affected by food instability. <coughs> Avantika is the old name. Uske baad it became Avanti. Avantika and Mahishmati are uh, the two sister cities of Ujjain. This uh, 6 billion US dollars financing facility will help boost the flow of food supplies and other important commodities like fertilizers to vulnerable communities okay <coughs> good morning okay next answer the following deification of buddha treading the path of bodhisattvas image worship and rituals which are the following features is or are the features of mahayana buddhism Ramya, that's the eventual idea, no? <laughs> Prelims is more a mind game rather than a fact game. That's the eventual idea of Pram. It's fantastic. Answer is yes, exactly. All this week. Deification, literally the word, it's a previous equation. And deification literally means... Um, Picturizing something or picturizing some element as God and worshipping it. In Mahayana Buddhism, they worship Buddha like an avatar or a god. Buddha and Bodhisattvas are central to the concept of Mahayana. Mahayanas vastly expand the Buddhist cosmology with various Buddhas and Bodhisattvas residing in different worlds, in, in different Buddha fields. This is shown through the depiction of Buddha and Bodhisattva through image worship and rituals in monasteries and Vihara. Okay, now. With reference to religious history of India, consider the following statements. Theravadin belong to Mahayana Buddhism. Lokatravadin sect is an offshoot of Mahasangika sect of Buddhism. The deification of Buddha by Mahasangika fostered the Mahayana Buddhism. Which of the following statements? These are correct. One and two, two and three, three only, one, two, three. See, 
at this point guys at this point there is nothing you can do abhi ja ke ncrt padho duniya mein ye karenge mars ko jayenge pluto ko jayenge mat karo wo din khatam wo that's the end of the story isko chodo you trust me you have done fantastic preparation you have done the best you could do just go thande dimag se answer karke aana that's it don't worry i will take this class till 27th morning don't worry every day till 27th morning we will have this class and we will restart from 29th morning <laughs> nothing is going to change na <laughs> 28th morning many people are writing exam no to theek hai usme tension nahi karna hoga good morning good morning good morning it's okay guys guys trust me you will do very well peace of mind is very important otherwise you will get pieces of mind answer is b devar therabad statement statement one what is statement one mahayana buddhism is therabad okay mahasanghika school was the first uh, to be located in the area of vaishali and spread across south india with amravati and nagarjuna konda in, in andhra as the major uh, centers of uh, um mahasanghikas and uh, also <coughs> its texts were written in uh, prakrit mahasanghikas then further divided into many subsects of which the best known is lokatravada sect of buddhism lokatravada is one of the earliest schools of buddhism very very early schools of buddhism and according to mahayana uh doxological sources compiled by bhavi veka vinita deva and others okay the their books their uh, ideological books called doxological books or doctrine books are compiled by bhavi veka and vinita deva <laughs> and see guys ha huh, by the way for your prelim uh, carry black color ball point pen i think this time the instructions were very clear no black color ball point pen only keep everything ready one day before um uh, admit card bhi 27th raat ko hi taiyar rakh lo admit card etc morning subah happens admit card and also carry an id proof original id proof don't take a laminated card if you have the original pan card carry original pan card or original aadhar card just in case see you may not really need it but just in case as a backup keep an original id with you ha huh. an admit card mein to id mention bhi hai the mahasanghika believed in plurality of buddha zuvar supramundin or lokattara and held what was passed for bhautam buddha in his early existence was only an apparition which of the following were common to buddhism and jainism avoidance of extremities of penance and enjoyment indifference to the authority of vedas denial of efficacy of rituals non injury to animal life select the correct answer using the code given below 1 and 2 3 and 4 2 3 and 4 this one everybody knows this is a very old uh, old question 2 uh, 3 4 yes buddhism always suggests middle path jainism always suggests extreme methods of salvation achievement both repudiate the efficacy of rituals and uh, ceremonies both bitterly condemn medical sacrifice and both buddhism and jainism clearly ignore god 
Lebanon shares border with Israel, Syria, Turkey, Iran. Select the correct answers using the codes given below. 1 and 2, 1, 2, 3, 2, 3, 4, 1, 3, 4. Lebanon shares border with which of these? Amethya Shiva Chandala Madhya Mamshati Dushita Amethya Shiva Chandala Madhya Mamshati Dushita Answer is A. Lebanon. I don't even know why people want to put Iran. I hope people live on earth only. Exactly. Iran to dunya ke dusri taraf hai. Lebanon is surrounded by Syria, Jordan, Israel. Lebanon is surrounded by Syria, Jordan and Israel. It's just a ma map of you know, surrounding nations. Like Iran is surrounded by uh, Iraq, Turkey, Armenia, Azerbaijan, Turkmenistan, Afghanistan, Pakistan. And coastal the Persian Gulf. Okay, no. He is the most celebrated of the Chola king. He engaged in naval expeditions and emerged victorious in the west coast, Sri Lanka, and conquered Maldives in Indonesian and uh, constructed a dam across the Kaveri River. He was Raja Di Raja Chola, Rajendra Chola one, Raja Raja one, Veera Rajendra Chola one. <laughs> Hmm. Answer is C. Raja Raja one is the most celebrated of the Chola kings. He emerged in the naval expeditions and emerged victorious in the west coast. Sri Lanka conquered Maldives in the Indian Ocean. He even defeated Cheras in the Battle of Kandalur Salai. The famous Battle of Kandalur Salai in which the Chera Navy was completely conquered, vanquished. He was also successful in expedition of western and eastern Chalukyas. He installed the Shakti Varma on the Vengi throne. Vengi is basically the Andhra region. He constructed a dam across the Kaveri river. He was a very devout follower of Lord Shiva. He completed the construction of the famous Rajarajeshwara temple, Brihadishwara temple, which is also called Periya Udayar temple. Periya Udayar. Periya Udayar Temple. His titles, Raja Raja Chola's titles are Mummadi Chola, Jayam Gundan, Siva Pada Sekaran. He was succeeded by his son, Rajendra One. There is another Chola Dam which is very, very important. That dam is Kallanai Grand Anikat. Kallanai Grand Anikat, which is located on near the on near Venni river, it was built by Karikal Cholan, whose original title is Karuna Saruroha Pala, uh, Karuna Saruroha Vihita Vilochana Pallava Prithvistara Karita Kaveri Tira Karikala Chola one is his full name. Okay, now Raja Raja Rajendra Raja Di Raja are the three cholas who are important for you. Friends are the following uh, statement. The great living chola temples were built by cholas, uh, kings of the chola empire, which stretched all over the south India and neighboring islands. The temple of Gangai Kunda Cholishwaram, built by Rajendra, one was completed in 1035. The Airavata Eswara temple complex, built by Rajaraja II, Darasuram, features a 24-meter vimana and a stone image of Lord Vishnu. Which of the following statements about these are correct? So one and three, two only, one and two, one, two, three. <laughs> hmm.
the great living chola temples were built by the kings of the chola empire answer is c gai bhans pani me gone the buffalo into the water Uh, the great living Chola temples were built by the Chola Empire or Chola kings, which stretched over uh, South India and the neighboring islands. Uh, Brihadishwara temple at Tanjavur, Brihadishwara temple at uh, Gangai Konda Cholishwaram, Airavateshwara temple at Darasuram. The temple of Gangai Konda Cholapuram was built in uh, Rajendra 1, completed in 1035, 53 meter Vimana. It has a recessed corners or you know, sort of slightly bent corners with upward curving movement. One uniqueness you will remember is that Gangai Konda Cholapuram temple has a lot of structural similarity with the Kalinga style. You know how Kalinga roof is like this? Dula style of roof like this. Bent, not straight but slightly bent. Gangai Konda Cholapuram tower also has exactly the same. Airavateshwara temple complex was built by Rajaraja II. At Darasuram, it has an image of Shiva, not Vishnu. Logic, hai na guys? Cholas hai, Shaiva bhaktas. Why would they build anything for Vishnu? Ah, Jagmohana or Dula. General, in general, no. Puja jay, no. Uh, Kalinga style of architectures do not have borders or do not have uh, boundary walls. They do not maintain Kalinga temple. The temples, the Chola temples testify the brilliance of achievements of the Chola in architecture, sculpture, painting and bronze casting. Consider the following statements about Rajendra 1. Under the reign, Chola dynasty was expanded to its greatest extent, dominating the trade over Indian Ocean. He built the city of Ganga Konda Cholapuram and the Brihadishwara temple. Which of the statements is or are correct? No, basically, Sita Dri, uh, Cholas were Shaiva Bhaktas. They followed Shaivism, not Vaishnavism. That's the reason. Pallavas were Vaishnavas. Pallavas followed Vishnu. Ch Cholas followed Shaiva. Why not, Saurabh? Konark temple is an exception. General Kalinga style may border nahi hota. Konark may exception hai. Yes, they built temples all across South India. The answer here is C. Perfect. Awesome, guys. Very good. Now, basically, Bridhishwara temple at Ganga Kunda Cholapuram was also built by Rajendravan. Rajendra was one of the very few monarchs uh, who, during his reign, expanded his kingdom into Southeast Asia, occupied other countries. After the conquest of the Palas, he built the city of Gangai Konda Cholapuram, which he eventually made the capital of the Chola Empire. He built the Brihadishwara temple there also. There is a Brihadishwara temple even in Gangai Konda Cholapuram temple, Gangai Konda Cholapuram city. Rajendra also built several Buddhist stupas across Southeast Asia. He defeated, I mean, the legend says Rajendra one defeated uh, Surya Varma dynasty of Cambodia. It is the Surya Varma kings who eventually contributed to the construction of Angkor Wat. No, no, not Raja Raja, Rajendra, Pooja Jain. Ye yaad rakhlo. Guys, teen log aate hain. Raja Raja, Rajendra, Raja Adi Raja. Raja Raja started the expansions. Rajendra had the greatest extent, who also occupied Southeast Asia. <clears throat> Raja Adi Raja eventually died. Simple. Raja Raja. 985 to 1014 AD. Rajendra. 1014 to 1044 AD. Raja Adi Raja. 1044 to 1052 AD. Rajendra peak. Raja Raja. Rajendra Raja Adi Raja. Okay. Which of the following are the major tribal groups of Jharkhand? Santal, Orao, Munda, Ho. 
major tribal groups of Dharkand. 1, 2 and 3, 2, 3 and 4. 1 and 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Answer is D. Dharkand has the highest population of Adivasis of the tribal people. Nearly 32 different tribes live there. According to 2001 census, Santal, Orao, Munda, Ho are among the major tribes in terms of numbers. Santals are 34%, Orao almost 20%, Munda is almost 15%, Ho almost 11%. Hmm. Kaja the following statements about Nanaji Deshmukh. He actively participated in Achara Vinoba Bhave's Bhudan. He established Chitrakut Gramodhya Vishwa Vidyalaya. In 2019, the President of India conferred Bharat Ratna upon him for his services to the nation. Which of the following statements about Isar are correct? Good morning, Akhilesh. I know, yes. Long years ago when I was teaching on an academy. <laughs> Now I teach on YouTube Academy. And the best part is my fees nail it. YouTube mill. <laughs> oh, awesome. So let's meet. Anybody in Hyderabad, you can always meet. We can always plan something. Yes, Sita. Oh, Osmania. Very good way. Close to my house. Pakka Gunal Milenge. Answer is D. Nanaji Deshmok. All the three are correct. Nanaji Deshmok was uh, born in 1916, Maharashtra, Singoli district. He is a social reformer educationalist and a very prominent politician of the Janta Party. He established uh, Chitrakut Gramodhya Vishwa Vijayalaya, uh, India's first rural university. Uh, he was influenced by Lokmanya Balgangadhar Tilak and his nationalist ideology. Um, nationalist ideology and uh, he actively participated in Acharya Vinoba Bhave's uh, Bhutan movement. Desh, I mean, uh, Acharya Deshmukh was the main force behind social activist Jay Prakash Narayan's agitation for total revolution. In uh, 2019, the President of India conferred Bharat Ratna upon him, posthumously obviously, for his services. Uh, service to people, patriotism and political acumen are uh, unique aspects of this. And uh, consider the following statements about Jay Prakash Narayan. He formed the Socialist Party. He led the Sampurna Kranti movement uh, organized during Indira Gandhi's regime. He was disillusioned with the political parties and called for communitarian democracy. Which of the following statements about these are correct? <coughs> who all are come, uh, guys, who all are in the Usman University Center, OU Center? Thank you, Akhilesh. Keep following, keep following. Okay, Pooja, Ramya, okay, these two are in uh, OU. Jayant, Prapurna, Bacha Center. Oh, Atapur, other side of the world. Answer is D, guys. Union Minister recently, I mean, in last year, October 2022, a 15 foot statue of Jayaprakash Narayan was uh, <coughs> opened in uh, Sitabdiara village in Bihar's Saran district. Right? And uh, political activity, he was a founding member of the Congress Socialist Party in 1934. 
He formed the Socialist Party, which was merged with J.B. Kriplani's Kisan, Mazdoor, Praja Party, actually to form the Praja Socialist Party in 1952. And uh, he eventually led to Sampurna Kranti movement, organized during uh, Indira Gandhi's regime, during the National Emergency in 1975. In fact, <clears throat> um, Jaya Prakash uncle was responsible for the complete dismantling of Indira Gandhi's uh, rule. In fact, I stay opposite, I say stay in Mushirabad, just west, very close to Padmaranagar. Just opposite, the other side. Just in the signal only, Padmaranagar signal only. He was, uh, Jayaprakash Narayan was disillusioned with the political parties and called for community and democracy. He always believed in patriotism, socialism, selflessness, perseverance for justice. Consider the following about Interpol. It was formed in 1923. No problem, Akhilesh, no issues. India as a Central Bureau of Investigation is the National Coordinating Agency with Interpol. It is headquartered in Lyon, France. Which of the following statements about ESR are correct? 1 and 2, 2 and 3, 1 and 3, 1, 2, 3. Sandeep, maybe in the next 1 to 2 weeks, I, may, I mean, the minute prelims is done, I may be in Delhi. Samarth. Actually, I did not want to, but situations were created in such a way that I had to. Let us put it that way. Every place I teach today, I have more than 10 years of continuity with them. I, have, I teach at CSB IAS Academy Hyderabad and I have been teaching there from 2012. I learn IAS Academy in Kerala. I have been teaching there from 2015. Government of Telangana, SC Study Circle, BC Study Circle and also I have been teaching there from 2016. Not circumstantial decision. Uh, I mean, I don't know. So look, there was a conflict of interest. I mean, probably let me put it this way maybe the team wanted they had another great faculty coming in so they no longer needed uh, subject they only wanted motivation now and i am not very i was with an academy for six years 2016 to 2022 not 23 seven years main, main generally nahi chhodta. I do come to Trivandrum, Varsha. I learn I'm not going to leave. CSB IS Academy, Hyderabad, I don't leave. These are my original institutes. Ramya, you can always uh, ping me. I'll tell you exactly where I live. Many students do come to my house. Prapurna and people know my house. Prapurna, Jayant. They have come to my house a couple of times. So, no issues. Many students come to my house, guys. My house is more like um, students keep coming, going. Chalta rata. My house is like that. Answer is D. Interpol, known as International Criminal Police Organization, is an international organization and a United Nations agency that facilitates worldwide police cooperation and crime control. Its headquarters in Lyon. It was formed in 1923. India is actually a member since the formation. Mm. The CBI is the National Coordinating Agency for Interpol. Interpol generally gives this red notice. It is a request to locate and provisionally arrest individual pending extradition. It is generally issued by the General Secretariat at the request of member country. Or international tribunal based on a valid national arrest warrant. And they are also, I mean, red notice is the highest notice. Other than this, there are also others like black notice, yellow notice, etc., which they give. Okay. Now, Ashmit always welcomes everybody. So, World Economic Outlook is published by 
WTO, WEF, IMF, World Bank. World Economic Outlook, who gives it? Bas, is bar prelims a chap paper at it. Zindagim or question each year. Thus, Tura Chasa Asansa paper as I was. I may go to Osmania University because that's the nearest campus. Many students are there, there in the morning. But otherwise, I generally don't uh, go out on the 28th because I have a lot of work. Then I'll have to put the um, key, no? World Economic Outlook is actually published by um, International Monetary Funds, International Monetary Fund IMF. And um, the worst, I mean, according to recent World Economic Outlook, the worst is yet to come. More than a third of globe's economy will contract this year or next. While the three largest economy, United States, European Union, and China would actually stop. This was a report which was given in October. Inflation remains the most immediate threat to current and future prosperity. And see, guys, remember this very clearly. Ye baat samaj lo. India ka time aa chuka hai. This is the time of India. American economy is stagnating. China is already dead. China is a dead body. Most Europeans are suffering. India is one country which is still unexplored in terms of its economic potentials. For the next few decades, India and ASEAN are going to be the two pillars of growth engines for the world. India to ASEAN, India, Bangladesh, Myanmar, ASEAN nations. We are going to be the world engines. The second world, in, then eventually we will also slow down. Then Af um, Africa will grow. You understand? Africa will reach what to India today is in the next 20, 30 years. India will reach what America, China is in the next 20, 30 years. You understand? We will be reaching to what America is or China is in the next 20, 30 years. This is Indian decades for the next 20, 30 years. Three, four decades will be India decades. Then it will be Africa decades. Africa will dominate. And that's how the world works. That's how the world works. Global inflation is now expected to peak at 9.5% in the late 2022. IMF has cut the global growth from 6% to 3.2% in 2020, you know, 2.7% in 2023. Main causes are Russian invasion of Ukraine, broadening inflation pressures and slowdown in China. Now, see, this report when it came, everybody criticized because this Russian invasion, hai na, this is an artificial invasion. This may end any time. Any time. And slowdown in China has been going on for a long period now. That's why many people think this was actually flooded numbers. You know, I mean, there's, there's one debate which goes on. You know why IMF keeps giving slow growth ideas? That way, IMF can keep America and European Union investors within their countries. If growth potential is slowing down, investors will not take risk, no. So, flight of money from America and Europe to India will not happen. You understand? So, just show the world that, okay, world is not growing, world is not growing. So, investors won't invest in developing economies. That way, the money can be kept in United States. I've never trusted the World Economic Outlook report. It's pura fludged report hai ye. After Africa, it is Latin. Latin America is not yet explored. Except Brazil and Argentina, people often forget that there is Chile, Peru, Paraguay, Uruguay. There's also Latin America. Consider the following statements about Human Rights Council. 
it is the united nations body whose mission is to promote and protect human rights around the world the council has 47 members elected for three years terms on a regional group basis headquarters of the council is located at geneva and switzerland which of the following statements these are correct <laughs> UN Human Rights Council. Human Rights Council is actually uh, D, 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 one, two, three. Correct, no. Headquarters is in Geneva, Switzerland. 47 members on a three-year term on a regional group basis. Human Rights, uh, UNHRC is a body whose mission is to promote and protect human rights around the world. Absolutely right. Recently, which one of the following has released the Biennial Living Planet Report 2022 showing the trends in global biodiversity and health of the planet? IOCN, FAO, WWF and WEF. <coughs> Living Planet Report World Wildlife Forum. Yes, they live the they release this biennial uh, plan, report, report bla, Living Planet Report 2022, uh, highlighting the trends in global biodiversity and health of the planet. It is, yes. Global Hunger Index is released by Global Hunger Index is released by. <laughs> UNDP, Oxfam, Amnesty, none of the above. Answer is uh, none of the above. It is released by Concern Worldwide and Wealth Hunger Life, a German group. Yes. No, no. Uh, this part on a summer, yeah, this is, I always believe this. We come really horrible on the World Hunger Index report because Indians are always hungry. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> not power hungry, we are always hungry. I mean, we are the only country who can eat biryani, pani puri together and also drink tea immediately with gulab jamun and mishti doi. Naturally, no, Sandeep, Pakistanis are also basically India team B. They are also always hungry. <laughs> what is Pakistan? India team B. I mean, I, I'm not insulting, but I'm not, I don't want to sound bad, but South Asia is basically Bukhar Asia. <laughs> India, Sri Lanka, Nepal, Bangladesh, Pakistan, Bukhar Pure. Pure ke pure Bukhar, I mean. You, you go see, go to any function, go to any festival, go to any exhibition, go to any place. Sabse pale khana milta hai. Even film theater mein bhi sabse zyada busy khane ki dukaan hoti hai. Bhukkad ka, bhukkad pura, pura dej bhukkad hai. Obviously we are going to be terrible in hunger index. We eat because it's fun, not because we are hungry. Uh, list 1 and list 2. Peshwa. Majumdar, Suranavis, Panditrao. 
in charge of justice and charitable grants, assist the king with correspondence, accountant, looked after the finance and general administration. World eats to live. South Asia lives to eat. Sandeep, not only the real South India maybe. Marne ke baad bhi, mare huye ke naam pe sab milke baith ke khate hain. Muslim. Answer is A. A. Perfect. A. Hey, yes. Peshwa looked after the finance and general administration. And uh, Majundar is uh, accountant. Surnavis basically assists the kings in uh, correspondence. Surnavis is basically the postal guy. The guy who uh, communicates the communication in charge. Pradit Rao in charge of justice and charitable grants. Who was, wh when was the second Anglo Mysore war fought? Previous year question guys, 17, 80, 84, 88, 79, 84, 88, 17, 70, 74. Wasn't it A? Why? Why? Except Samarth, nobody gave the right answer. Wasn't it A? Battle of Porto Novo, 1782. 1783, uh, Hyder Ali died. So naturally, Second Anglo Mysore War is happening in 84. No. Amethya Shiva Chandala Madhya Mamshati Dushita Etasya Patekim Kshamtam. Which of the following is not true about Tipu Sultan? He defeated the English in Third Anglo Mysore War. His biography was Tariq e Khudai. He died in the Fourth Anglo Mysore War. He laid the foundation of Krishna Sagara Dam on Kaveri. Which of the following is wrong? Those from Karnataka, if you do not answer this, you should be eating gulab jamun and biryani together. Answer is A. 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 Third Anglo Mysore War, he did not win. He lost. He lost. Yes. The Battle of Buxar was fought between English Nawab and French, Qasim Nawab and uh, Alam, Akbar Nawab of Bengal, Abad, Akbar Nawab of Bengal, Marathas. Sarab, Behros Biryani gives Biryani and Gulab Jamun separately. In separate, separate Dabas. B, no, B, 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 B. Which treaty was signed after Battle of Buxar? What is the treaty? <laughs> What was the treaty signed after Battle of Buxar? Treaty of Allahabad. Treaty of Allahabad was for which two kingdoms? It was implemented for which two kingdoms? Other than Mughals. Yes. Now, who was brought back to power after Battle of Buxar in Bengal? Who was brought back to power after Battle of Buxar in Bengal? Hmm. 
Mir Jafar. Yes. Mir Jafar. Mir Jafar was brought back to power. Which of the following were the earliest precursors of Harappan seals? Terracotta seals founded Mehargad. Stone seals founded Amri. Clay tablets founded Kalibangan. Copper tablets founded Code DG. They just did not attend the live class. He is just posting questions on uh, Telegram group. Thus I say. Uh, answer A. A, A, A. Yes. Terracotta seals founded Mehargad as the precursors of Harappan seals. At one of the Indus sites, have archaeologists discovered a middle town, a distinct from Citadel and Lower Town. Identify the site from among the following Surkatoda, Daimabad, Dolevera, Lothal. Basically, a place, one of the Indus sites which has three cities, three parts. <laughs> Dola Vira. Answer is Dola Vira. Dola Vira. Answer is C. 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 Remember yesterday in one of the two, yes, two, three days back class also you had the same similar type of question. Not the same, but a similar type of question. Three part city. Which of the following statements about Harappan measurements are true? Harappan seems to have used both foot and cubic system simultaneously. Their foot system ranged 16 to 32 and cubic system 48 to 64 centimeters. At Monjudaro, a slip of shells seems to be part of linear system. At Harappa, the fragmentary bronze rod broken at both ends seems to have been used on standard qubit. Choose the answers from the codes given below. <laughs> This is obviously a little uh, difficult question. Answer is C. Answer is C. 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 One, three, and uh, four. Is the other way around. Foot system forty-eight to sixty-four. Cubic system sixteen to thirty-two. One, three, and four. Okay. Now, next question. Who am the following is generally considered the greatest exponent of guerrilla tactics of warfare after Shivaji? Tarabai, Balaji Vishwanath, Rajaram, Bajirao 1. Greatest exponent of uh, the uh, guerrilla tactics. Ah, bas. Mastani ka Bajirao. Bajirao 1 of Mastani. Yes. Bilkul. Who among the following got the title of Sena Karte? Balaji Vishwanath, Balaji Bajirao, Shahu, Bajirao 1. Balaji Vishwanath, Balaji Bajirao, Shahu and Bajirao 1. Answer is A. Balaji Vishwanath. Sena Karte. During whose rule did the system of Maratha Confederacy began? With certain Maratha chiefs getting themselves interest in different parts of India. 
बालाजी बाजीराव सवय माधवराव शाहू बाजीराव द सेकंड मराठा कॉन्फेडरेसी पेशवा सेट पुना होलकर सेट इंडोर सिंधिया सेट ग्वालियर गायकवाड सेट बरोडा भोसले सेट नागपुर the maratha confederacy system it was actually during the period of shahu 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 here it is shahu or guys maratha confederacy shahu maharaj or bajirao 1 shahu maharaj ya yeah, bajirao 1 that should be your answer balaji bajirao aate aate it was already maratha confederacy सवाई माधवराव सक्सीडेड आफ्टर बालाजी बाजीराव बालाजी बाजीराव के बाद माधवराव माधवराव के बाद नारायण राव नारायण राव के बाद सवाई माधवराव सवाई माधवराव के बाद बाजीराव द सेकंड एंड ऑलवेज रिमेंबर बाजीराव टू वाज द सन ऑफ रघुनाथ राव रघुबा हु वाज रिस्पांसिबल फॉर द किलिंग ऑफ नारायण राव सवाई माधवराव फादर ओके आंसर हियर इज सी Who was Nur Jahan's son-in-law? Khurram, Nazim, Abdul, Shariar. Ladni Begum ka pati. Husband of Ladni Begum. Shariar Khan. Remember in my class, I even put a map. Jo Jahangir, W one, W two, W three. Noor, Noor's daughter, Ladli. Ladli is married to Jahangir's wife once, son Sharia. Sharia Khan, Ladli Begum. Okay. Ha. Which of the following statements is related to Mughal Emperor Aurangzeb? He replaced many Hindu temples with mosques. He promoted religious toleration, converted to Hinduism, presided over an era of religious harmony. I mean, among these options, that's the best option. There is only one option. That is, answer is A. He replaced many Hindu temples with mosques. Remember, in some of the recent excavations and recent study of Aurangzeb mentions. that aurangzeb was also responsible for construction of many temples aurangzeb also constructed many temples that's the strange part chitrakoot balaji temple which of the following is not true about the first anglo mysore war it was fought in 1767 69 and hyderabad really defeated the english in the first anglo mysore war treaty of madras was result of the first anglo mysore war all of the above statements is or are correct <laughs> All of the above statements is are correct. All the statements are correct. No. Sixty-seven, sixty-nine is when the first Anglo-Mysore war was fought. Hyder Ali defeated the British, indeed, and he also made the British sign a treaty called the Treaty of Madras. Perfect. Spot on. Who was popular in Onas Nana Sahib? Bajira one, Balaji Bajira, Balaji Bishwana, Sabai Madhura. Is it Balaji Bajira, Nana Sahib one, son of Bajira one? Balaji Bajira, good, good, good. Everybody is right. Perfect, 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 perfect. Good morning, Aishwarya. During whose reign did the post of Peshwa not only become powerful but also hereditary? Raja Ram, Shivaji the second, Sambhaji, Shahu ji.
साहू महाराज ना शाहू महाराज यस बिल्कुल सही जवाब शाहू महाराज हु द फॉलोइंग वाज द फर्स्ट मराठा रूलर टू गेट लीगल रिकॉग्निशन फ्रॉम द मुगल्स शाहू शिवाजी राजा राम संभाजी लीगल रिकॉग्निशन फ्रॉम मुगल्स एज ए किंगडम इन फैक्ट वॉज इवन गिवेन दी चौथन सरदेश मुखी शुरू में तो सरदेश मुखी बाद में चौथ दिया गया था साहू महाराज नो रिमेंबर शाहू एग्जैक्टली सौरभ यू आर राइट सौरभ पार्थ सही पकड़े साहू महाराज बर्निका साहू महाराज बिल्कुल बिल्कुल शिवाजी इन हिज लेटर इयर्स इंक्रीज द लैंड रेवेन्यू इन हिज स्वराज्य फ्रॉम थर्टी थ्री परसेंट टू थर्टी फाइव परसेंट फोर्टी परसेंट फोर्टी फाइव परसेंट फिफ्टी परसेंट शिवाजी टैक्सेशन Answer is B B B B B B B B forty percent. Increase the land revenue tax from thirty three percent to forty percent. In Maratha administration, who was responsible for the collection of land revenue at the lowest unit at the village? Uh, Mirazdar, Kulkarni, Patil, Deshmukh. Land revenue village level pe collect karne wale kaun the Maratha administration mein? <laughs> देशमुख इच इच अने पाटिल देशमुख तो बाद में आए थे पाटिल पाटिल लैंड रेवेन्यू लैंड रेवेन्यू एट द विलेज लेवल देशमुख इज लैंड लॉर्ड नॉट लैंड रेवेन्यू कलेक्टर देशमुख इज लैंड लॉर्ड व्हाट वॉज द मेजरिंग इंस्ट्रूमेंट अडॉप्टेड बाय शिवाजी इन द यूनिफॉर्म मेजरमेंट ऑफ लैंड सिकंदर एगस तना जरीब कथी मेजरमेंट सिस्टम मेजरमेंट यूनिट ऑफ मेजरमेंट सिस्टम कौन सा था कथी कथी तीन कथिया वाला कथी तीन कथिया वाला कथी Remember this always. Shivaji's land measurement unit was kathi, just like how the tin kathiya system is. Where did Shivaji station his naval fleet? Kolaba, Kalyani, Salsad, and Vasai. Shivaji's naval headquarters. Guys, shall we start uh, vice royce? Shall we begin the discussion from Lord Lytton? Or we'll continue the MCQs. Answer is A. Kolaba, Kolaba. The naval fleet was basically located in Kolaba. We'll finish up the MCQs. Uh, just a just a couple of more. That's it. Arrange the successors of Shivaji in chronological order. राजा राम राज राम राजा संभाजी शाहू शिवाजी द सेकेंड Today I have time. No issues. I have time. Answer is B. 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 
बी अंबाजी राजा राम शिवाजी द सेकेंड साहू महाराज राम राजा छत्रपति राम राजा वॉट इज द हिस्टोरिकल सिक्वेंस ऑफ द फॉलोइंग पेशवास बाजीराव बालाजी बाजीराव माधवराव सवय माधवराव बालाजी विश्वनाथ नारायण राव Without doubt, it must be seen. No? Without doubt, Balaji Vishwanath followed by Baji Rao, followed by Balaji Baji Rao, followed by Madhu Rao, followed by Narayan Rao, followed by Savai Madhu Rao, then followed by Raghunath Rao, then see answer. Then Baji Rao the second. Arrange the following events in Shivaji's reign in chronological sequence. His bold attack on Shaista Khan's military camp, his visit to Aurangzeb's court, imprisonment and escape, his conquest of the Javli fort, his conquest of the Jinji Velur forts, his coronation at Raigad and assumption of title Chhatrapati. <coughs> शिवाजी के जिंदगी में सीक्वेंस स्पॉट ऑन माधव डी 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 समर्थ माधव गुड राइट इट इज डी After his assumption of the title Chhatrapati only, he occupied Jinji, Velur, etc. He came south to 1674. In 1674. Last question for the day. What is the ascending order of the following army officials of Marathas? Jumladar, Habaldar, Paik, Naik, Saranobat, Hazari. Maratha administration offices. Answer is B. B, 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 B. Sarah Nobat is actually the in charge of army. Kiladas are officers of forts. Nayaks are in charge or head of the member unit of infantry. Havaldars head of five Nayaks. Jumladar head of five Nayaks. Ghuraz boat laden with guns. Galibat rowing boats with 40 to 50 rowers. Pikes are foot soldiers of the Maratha administration. Terminology very very important. The terminology is very very important. Okay. Guys. Let us uh, quickly go through the Viceroy's uh, uh, from Lord Lytton onwards. Okay, we will uh, continue Lord Lytton onwards. Lord Lytton. Yes, yes. Havaldar Jumladar Singh. Head of five nights. Lord Lytton, 1876 to 1880. In fact, the first four viceroys which we've seen, Canny, Mayo, Northbrook, Lawrence, or Lawrence and Northbrook, the first guys were very good. The period of masterly inactivity, that is, they had the power, but they did not get involved into internal affairs. From Lytton's period, we start seeing uh, the rising of tensions between Indians and the viceroys. Viceroys and Indians start to have tensions and start to have troubles among themselves. Lytton was, in fact, Lytton was a member of the Whig party, conservatives. He was actually a member of the Whig party. He was not a liberal. So, he is generally always regarded 
as the most ruthless viceroy who had absolutely no respect for the people of the country. He was ruthless, he was racist, he was arrogant, he was pretty bad. Lytton was very, very bad. He was ruthless and arrogant. Abni Bhasha me bolo te ek number ka gamandi uncle thi ya. Lytton was born on November 8, 1831 in London to Edward Bulwer Lytton and Rosina Doyle Vila. And uh, his mother was an outspoken supporter of women's rights. In 1849, Lytton joined the diplomatic corps. He was coming as a diplomat only. He was less a politician, more a diplomat. In 1876, Lytton had been appointed as the Governor General and Viceroy of India. Previously, he has done distinguished service in Russia and uh, Vienna and in most parts of Europe. See, when Lytton came to India, India was actually in the grip of a famine in 1876. If you remember previously during Lawrence's period and Northbrook's period, Bihar famine happened and famine had been controlled fantastically, right? Lytton ke period mein nahi hua tha. Instead of handling famine, Lytton was even known to have called a grand darbar to give Queen Victoria the title Empress of India. You know, that was the typical idea. He even gave the title Empress of India. In 1876, Famai had no respect for it. Had absolutely no respect for it. His administration failed to respond to the famine relief. Almost 10 million people died. In fact, many historians believe Lytton is a classic example of social Darwinism. Contributing mainly to his negative attitude towards Indian peasants suffering from famine. I mean, he actually believed he was the racist white man, black man theory guy. He wanted to promote free trade, but only in favor of Britain. When he promoted free trade, but only for the ruling circles of England. He used laissez fair, but only to support British, British cotton mill owners. So what he did is, those who were exporting from India to Britain, will have to pay taxes but those who are importing to india or exporting from britain towards india they could do tax free trade Bilkul tax free trade the british government passed the act and notified the indian government that duties would be repealed when financial conditions permitted and despite india's poor financial situation as a result of the famine Lytton abolished all the import duties on 29 items such as sugar, sheetings and so on. In fact, to favor British industry, he reduced the taxation in India for the British merchants. Even if it was coming at the cost of India's economy. During his period, the Second Anglo-Afghan War happened. Lytton made friendly relations with Afghan Zamir Sher Ali Khan. And uh, Sher Ali was thought to be pro-Russian and no effort was spared to actually convince him to bring back to British food. Lytton's militarily, this was one of his greatest successes, bringing Afghanistan back into the fold of British. Yes. And uh, <laughs> Lytton even planned an invasion of Afghanistan. And uh, he was successful. Eventually, invaded Afghanistan, made Afghanistan to sign the Treaty of Gand Gandamak. The Treaty of Gandaman, which is one of the treaties after on, on the basis of which the Durand Line is actually established. Border between India and uh, Afghanistan. But obviously, most of you guys know this. Lytton ka sabse bekar act was the Vernacular Press Act, where he gave power to the district magistrates without any prior permission from the government that the magistrate could compel or force a printer, particularly vernacular newspaper printer, 
नॉन इंग्लिश पेपर्स टू प्रिंट और टू नॉट टू प्रिंट एनी कंटेंट विच में हिंडर और विच में मेक विच में बी अनपॉपुलर विद द ब्रिटिश गवर्नमेंट एंड एज अ गारंटी दे हैव टू ऑल्सो सबमिट अ बॉन्ड ऑफ टेन थाउजेंड रुपीज giving an undertaking not to publish anything that might incite discontent 10000 rupees ka bond bhi dena padega the magistrate was also given the authority to deposit the security or confiscate it if he finds the printer violated the bond or the guarantee so vernacular newspapers were prohibited from publishing anything critical of the government if the printer violates his press may be seized the worst aspect of this act was it discriminated against native vernacular newspapers and english newspapers vernacular press act that is why is commonly called the gagging act or the gagging act of government it was specifically aimed at amrit bazar patrika which eventually turned overnight into english <laughs> and during lytton's period there was severe famine as i said in bombay madras mysore hyderabad parts of central india and punjab nearly 5.8 crore people were affected 50 lakh people died in a single year according to rc dat ramesh chandra dat took the government made only half hearted efforts to support the famine stricken in fact government's famine machinery or famine support was virtually useless later in 1878 the strachey commission or the great the most popular famine commission or the strachey commission very important for you guys was um, established mainly to study the impacts of famine which opposed uh, assistance and advocated for able bodied people to be given jobs at wages sufficient to maintain their health this is something very similar to manrega mgn rega employment scheme strachey commission types the recommendation i mean eventually based on strachey commission recommendation construction of the railway and irrigation works was begun in fact later during a ripon period who came after lytton the famous famine policy was this under a famine policy in famine areas government would undertake infrastructure projects like irrigation canals and railway work that way giving employment to people rather than just financial assistance uh during his period as i said there was the grand darbar lytton's grand darbar to announce the assumption of title by the people and the princess of india and uh, queen victoria was given the title kaiser e hind or empress of india darbar unfortunately was held at a time when india was going through a massive famine with nearly 5 and 1/2 crore people impacted lytton's lavish spending of millions on this pomp and show of the darbar affected people very badly i mean indians were quite critical about this entire scenario indians ko pasand nahi aaye all this was actually bad calcutta journal even called that nero was i mean calcutta journal uh, the newspaper even said nero was fiddling while rome burned the famous quote on lytton i mean when there was famine lytton was still enjoying his pomp darbar on the other hand proved to be a blessing in disguise <laughs> despite the fact that it demoted the princess from allies to feudatories the status of indian subjects of queen to that of citizens of british empire was given matlab indians were now given the status as subjects of british empire that is why surendra banerji eventually formed uh, the indian association during lytton period to protect the interests of indians because now the british parliament will is responsible to undertake the grievances of indians as well because indians are also equivalent to british citizens in the british empire thanks to lytton's darbar lytton was a thinker no doubt but he was a failure as a ruler in fact according to many historians including bipin chandra agar lytton and karzan nahi aate na 
तो नेशनल मूवमेंट नहीं होता हिंदुस्तान में वी वुड बीन लॉयल पीपल टू ब्रिटिश इफ लिटन एंड कर्जन वर नॉट देयर नथिंग वुड है हिस पॉलिसी इज लेड द ग्राउंड वर्क फॉर एमरजेंस ऑफ नेशनलिज्म Lytton's period was very strenuous, guys. So he was succeeded by Ripon, Lord Ripon. Ripon was a liberal. He was actually a liberal. He came from the Liberal Party. Very soft guy. He is known for introduction of the local self government. He is also generally termed as the good viceroy of India. The good viceroy. In 1880. William Gladstone the prime minister of britain appointed william uh, lord ripon as the viceroy of india during his period we see the growth of local self government also the famous ilbert bill controversy where uh, indians were given more legal rights actually even treating indian judges on equal terms with european judges it was a progressive step from ripon but it was opposed very badly and because europeans opposed ripon who was trying to do good for indians indians also understood the method of opposition how to protest a series of laws would establish local self government as well during ripon period that's why he is commonly called the father of local self government system in india ripon ke period mein one another great reform is the hunter commission led by will william wilson hunter it is basically an education reforms commission for primary and secondary education plus this year they uh, last year also they asked this question guys understand this very well the first factory act 1881 was passed during lord ripon period it actually reduced the working hours of local factory workers and sought to improve their working conditions in india lord ripon was also instrumental in reorganizing the madras forest department and expanding the systematic forest conservation methods in india and 1882 resolution is the local self government resolution in fact ripon is so popular that even today the madras government municipal office building is known as ripon building cmda headquarters is ripon building in chennai named after lord ripon he grant, granted numerous powers to local governments in rural and urban bodies and uh, he also gave more rights to the electorate that's why ripon is commonly called the father of local self government and his famous commission is hunter commission william wilson hunter see there are two two hunters who will come hunter commission hunter committee hunter committee jallianwala bag hunter commission lord ripon william wilson hunter was actually indian civil service member he was also a president vice president of the royal asiatic society he was uh, made the magistrate in the bengal presidency uh, from there he began compiling local traditions and records in fact he was instrumental in this hunter commission which wanted to promote primary education for indians hunter commission report eventually said that primary education must be expanded by the government in a very determined effort in fact compulsory education was promoted board literary and vocational instruction was to be included in secondary education the commission found that the country lacked adequate facilities for female education while hunter recommendations were not implemented in full many parts of it were properly implemented many parts of hunter commission were properly significantly implemented And finally ilbert bill ilbert bill ka logic very simple most of you know this when ripon came he saw that indian judges could not give judgment on european criminals whereas european judges could give judgment on indian criminals so ripon obviously saw this as a discrimination he saw this as a bad thing he wanted to fix it so he did some reforms in the indian penal code 
Ripon proposed, proposed amending the country's existing laws to give Indian judges and magistrates the authority to try British officer offenders. And basically, C.P. Ilbert, Lippan's uh, legislative member, wanted to give equality to the judge. I mean, Ilbert's and Ripon's logic was judge is a judge. Indian judge, European judge, kuch nahi hota because the law is European law. <laughs> and uh, as a result, Europeans living in India saw it as a humiliation. And uh, the Europeans did not want to be treated on equal basis with Indian judges. There was fierce opposition by Europeans. Ripon bill was passed, but again with amendment, where Indian district magistrates were to be supported by a European jury, whereas British judges were free. Because Ripon bill or Ilbert bill was never passed in the way Ripon wanted, Ripon quit. Ripon actually quit, quit the government. He resigned. And the bill was itself passed as Criminal Procedure Code Amendment Act 1884. But he did not like this and he left. Ripon's tenure in India was, was very good. He, he had very important positions. He was first volunteer battalion of Prince of Wales' own and uh, Lord Lieutenant of the North Riding of Yorkshire from 1873 to 1906. He was also a Freemason. He was a provincial grandmaster of the West Riding. Eventually, he became a grandmaster of the Freemasons. He was Chancellor of the University of Leeds. In fact, there is a street even today called the Ripon Street in Calcutta. And uh, um, <clears throat> Ripon Club in Mumbai was also founded in 1884 by Parsis for the benefit of their community, named after Lord Ripon. And uh, Ripon was eventually succeeded by Lord Dufferin. See, Dufferin onwards, we'll see from tomorrow. Let us see a couple of more questions and we'll finish it off. I mean, we have had a few questions pending MCQs. pending just few of them which of the following statements about the treaty of purandar are true shivaji surrendered 23 of the 35 forts to the mughals the mughals in return ceded the two districts of surat and ahmednagar to shivaji shivaji's son sambhaji was granted a once of 5000 by mughals Shivaji was recognized as independent ruler of Swarajya by Mughals. The Mughal recognized Shivaji's rights to create to certain parts of Bijapur kingdom. Which are the, uh, sir, the correct answers from the codes given below? Yes. I know this is a little complicated question. Answer is C. Mughals did not cede any district to Shivaji. Mughals never had good relations with Shivaji in the first place. Shivaji was never recognized as an independent ruler by Mughals. Yes, statement 2 is wrong, statement 4 is wrong. Which of the following statements about Shivaji's administration are incorrect? He introduced the uniform assessment of land revenue on the basis of measurement of land. He completely did away with the various hereditary revenue officials. He collected Chauth and Sardesh Mukhi apart from traditional land revenue from the peasants for his Swarajya. He paid all his officials, big or small, military or civil, in cash only. Choose the correct answers from the codes given below. The question is asking incorrect. Answer is A. Answer is A, A, A. Two, three and four are incorrect. One is correct. Remember Kathi? Kathi, Kathi. Yes. Okay. 
guys so that's it for today uh, let us meet uh, tomorrow in the morning at uh, 8 a.m and uh, we will continue the discussion on mcqs another series of mcq and uh, the remaining viceroy is from dufferin to karzan we'll see tomorrow okay why three incorrect <laughs> When was this that Puja? Shivaji ko chautar sardesh mukhi collect karne ka rights kabhi nahi mila tha na? When did uh, Mughals give the right? Never. They never gave that right, no? Right? Thank you guys. You have a nice day. I'll see you tomorrow in the morning. Bye-bye.